Welcome back. You know, one of the things that I've run across in my career, fairly frequently, it happens more often than you'd think. I've had people approach me with questions regarding which side they should shoot on, their left or their right side. <coughs> in other words, they're what we would consider a right-handed person would consider a dominant side being the right side, or a left-handed person uh, would consider a dominant side the left side. Now, in reality, the larger question is far more important, which is the dominant eye. And that's the one that sometimes gets people confused. The, the reason that this is such a fairly common issue is because is because we have we have two eyes and yet one of those eyes is really the one that perceives our image the other one acts as a the binocular vision that gives us depth of field depth of uh, perspective so in other words uh, if you try to drive a car if a person tries to drive a car with one eye closed or a patch over his eye he'll quickly realize that he doesn't know how far he is from uh, corners and from other cars so it's very, very important to understand which is the correct dominant eye. Without the dominant eye being in position behind the sights, sighting is absolutely impossible. Uh, for instance, if I, if I were to uh, shoot with my left side, or tr I try to sh attempt to shoot with my left eye, because unless I close my right eye to uh, cast out my dominant side, uh, I wouldn't be able to see the sight. How does a person, how does a person determine which is his dominant eye? There are a number, there are a number of tricks that we've used as instructors to establish which one is the dominant eye. You can put a hole in a piece of uh, paper and uh, bring it toward you, and the the eye that it goes toward uh, to see with is the is the dominant eye. The one that I find is most revealing immediately requires no special tools, is to simply place your thumb or some object uh, at a distant object and, uh, you know, whether it's a pencil or a thumb, and close, close your right eye and then close your left eye. The image which does not move, the thumb that does not move, is your dominant side. In other words, when that eye is open, and your thumb doesn't move, that's your dominant side. The uh, inferior side will, the thumb will jump to one side. It's impossible, as I say, to uh, gather a correct sight picture without having uh, established a correct uh, eye dominance and to, to know which one is which. Now, I've run into, more often than not, I've run into cross-paw situations. In other words, people who have what they believe to be a dominant right side, but with a left uh, dominant eye. That really creates a real problem. Sometimes it comes from forced transitions earlier in life. In other words, a lot of times people have been forced for whatever reason by their family or teachers or something to acquire uh, a, basically a, a new dominant side. They uh, were they were at one time left-handed, they were born left-handed, and yet they were forced to transition to uh, a right-handed a right -handed type of, uh, to doing anything, whether it be writing uh, or, for, or for sports or whatever. In fact, even the U.S. military, uh, for quite a number of years, demanded that people all shoot with their uh, right, with their right side. Um, but for somebody who has had a forced transition from the left side to the right side, or vice versa, you can transition your side mechanically, but there's no transitioning for your eye. Uh, you, you were born with you were born with a dominant eye, and that's the one that you're going to die with. Um, nobody has nobody has uh, ambidextrous eyes, you might say, uh, or, or ambiocular. There's no such thing because otherwise you'd be going around seeing two images all the time. Uh, but it's first of all, it's important to determine which is your dominant side. Once you've established which is your dominant eye, now that's the side that you should reasonably learn to shoot with. Now, if you're talking about a handgun, 
And all these guns I, I make sure are clear before I uh, come online. But if you're talking about a handgun, it's obvious that a handgun is not necessarily as uh, demanding in terms of which side to put your, uh, your focus on. In other words, I can, I can shoot with equal proficiency with my, uh, with my left eye by simply moving my head over or with my right eye by moving it to the other side. It, it really makes no difference which, which side it's on. So with a handgun, it's less important. I can still shoot with my dominant side, whether it be my left side, my left side hand, or my right side hand. If you are, if you are shooting, if you are shooting a uh, rifle, that's or a shotgun, it's quite another matter. The the correct the correct method for shooting a rifle or a shotgun, uh, in order to have the best depth of field, especially with moving targets, running game, or, or whatever whatever the target is that happens to be moving, uh, it's always best to uh, have both eyes open. With both eyes open, your eye is always, the dominant eye is always going to take over. So if I were, if I were to attempt to shoot with my left side, with both eyes open, I simply would never be able to get my sights lined up. My sights would always be, would always be angled. I'd be looking at the, I'd be looking at the side of the barrel. I can see this sight and this sight as if they're completely uh, beside me. Uh, in order to shoot, I would have to I would have to close my right eye in this situation. The same with a shooter who is a right-handed shooter who has a left dominant side, left dominant eye side. Now that person would have to uh, force close the left eye in order to see out of the right side, because the 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 vision is always going to go right down the side of the dominant uh, eye. So. What's the, what's the way to handle it? Well, you have to make a decision. Um, most people I have, I have discovered, most people can easily learn to transition and shoot from the side that, uh, that their dominant eye is on. In other words, mechanically, it's not that difficult to acquire uh, a new side to your body. In other words, if you've been forced or if you were born with a, a left side or a right side, and you need to transition from one to the other because of a dominant eye issue, it's not that difficult to uh, establish some control and very good, uh, very good marksmanship and skill with the side which is previously your weak side. It's not that difficult. Um, it feels awkward at best. It feels, at first, it feels very, very awkward and it feels as if you can't uh, manage things. But it's just a matter of, it's just a matter of accommodating it. And it's just a matter of learning a new, uh, just basically a new skill. Um, it, it, in fact, when I was when I was instructing officers, we always required them to shoot with their uh, with their dominant side and their non-dominant side both ways. That way, there they could handle targets from either side of a uh, corner structure uh, without having to expose themselves, whether it be beside a cruiser or beside the corner of a building or whatever, so they could always maintain the best cover by shooting with their non-dominant side, regardless of whether they were left-handed or right-handed. So, take that into consideration, that it's not that difficult to transition from one to the other. Now, if you, if you, really, have a, if you really have a difficult time transitioning from one to the other, you absolutely have to use, you have to learn to close the dominant side so that you can force the transition to the non-dominant side. Do you understand what I'm saying? In other words, um, with, with the handgun, if I am, if I am a right-handed shooter, but my dominant side is my, my left side, I now have to make sure that I position my sights so that I'm looking down the uh, left side. That will happen instinctively with a handgun, and there's never any issue with a handgun. The problem occurs with rifles and long guns where the, the switchover is not as natural. So in that situation, in that situation, you just simply have to buckle up and you have to learn to uh, control, the, control the, the gun from the other side and learn to establish the same cheek weld, all the same rules of marksmanship apply, they just 
now transition to the other side. Your, your stance is moved with your feet in the opposite direction. You open your body, in other words, to the other side. And uh, from there, everything else just becomes a matter of uh, using all the same rules. Um, if you're a target shooter, sometimes this can be a problem. Target shooters, uh, typically, you know, they're shooting all day long. Uh, and it becomes very tiresome and it can affect your marksmanship if you have to force an eye closed. And that's why you'll see a lot of times uh, target marksmen will actually blacken one side of their glasses or they wear a patch or something like this because they actually need to uh, have a perfect acuity, visual acuity, down their dominant side in many cases. Most, most long range target shooters prefer not to have both eyes open to be sure they can acquire a target most clearly without any, uh, without any uh, ghost images that sometimes appear uh, during, a, during a long day of shooting. And it, it, improves, it improves their uh, visual acuity in terms of uh, depth perception too because they can wear irises that close down and those irises will establish better uh, depth of field. So those things are getting us off target here, off track. The most important thing is to if you think that you have a uh, dominant side problem, first of all, establish whether you have a uh, dominant eye issue first. That's the, that's, that's the first thing that you need to establish, is which, which eye is, most, uh, is, is your dominant side, and then work from there. So that's the end of this lesson. Thank you for watching, and God bless.